Hello, and welcome to lesson eight. Uh, so we're going to talk about filters today. I have four filters set up here just to give you some idea of the variations. You know, obviously you'll pick the one that you like for yourself personally, but everything sort of fits into some kind of mold like this. Uh, so <clears throat> from the beginning, we have a an oscillator over here. And you'll have been noticing as we go, um, these are kind of bright sounding. Uh, so not necessarily like completely pleasant to listen to. Um, and this is where the filter comes in. Um, so if the oscillator asks what shape and the VCA asks how much and the function generator asks when, this is sort of like boy, <laughs> how can we limit this? Uh, sort of like how much, uh, what frequency? There we go, what frequency? Um, so what's happening is a filter takes a sound like that, a really bright sound, and gives you some options um, to change the way that sound works. Um, so I'm going to look at, you know, this is like kind of a Moog style filter. Um, there's several different ways that a filter can work. And actually all of these filters have these modes. Uh, so first one is low pass. Um, so what that means is everything, it's cutting out high frequencies. It's sort of like the opposite of what it says. Um, if it says low, you know, we're passing the lows. Um, and as I turn the knob down, we lose the treble frequencies. Um, so it's a more pleasing sound. Okay. Um, what the resonance knob does is it makes a sort of a bump. You know, if we think of a filter as an EQ, this makes a big bump at the point where um, the EQ is cutting off the high end. Um, and what it does is it just makes it really obvious where it's cutting off. kind of more nasal sound. If we go all the way up, it gets really noticeable. Um, so you hear that whistling that happens, um, and that's a mark of, you know, a lot of resident resonance. Uh, you know, this is sort of where the sound of acid bass comes from. All right, so low pass. We also have a band pass. Um, what that does is it cuts off, well, let's start with high pass, actually. Uh, so low pass and high pass. So if low pass cuts off the highs and lets the lows through, high pass cuts off the lows and lets the highs through. <laughs> so you can hear all we're left with is almost a hissy sound. And same thing, resonance here is going to really emphasize what's happening. Okay. Um, I find with, you know, something like a sawtooth, the high pass is really gnarly sounding, um, but that might be what you're going for. Okay. Band pass is a combination of low and high, so it's cutting off the lows and the highs and just leaving sort of like a... V or U shape in the EQ. Um, so you hear at high settings, we've got a lot of treble. And it's sort of just mid range. And then emphasizing bass and resonance will help you hear that more. <laughs> okay. Um, and then lastly, we have a notch filter. Um, so what a notch does is it's sort of the opposite of a bandpass, where it's it's letting everything around the filter come through. Um, so it's like a, an, you know, if a bandpass is an upside down V or a U, this is, you know, a right side up V. Losing the mid range and losing the low end. Um, so that can be useful, you know, depending on what sound you're going for. 
I encourage you to experiment. Um, so this one's kind of Moog sounding. Um, this one is kind of a Roland type of sound. Um, and it gives you some more options um, because we've got a push button. It actually doesn't have a notch filter, but it has two different flavors of low pass. So here's one flavor. So you hear like a low pass, generally a, low, a lower number means that it's letting more highs come through as it goes. Um, and then these other two are a little more specialized, and we're going to talk about them. Um, so with every filter, you'll notice we have CV inputs. Um, and so what that means is we can change the knob using voltage. So I've got my function generator over here. I'm going to set it to an LFO, and you can see there it's kind of winding around. And the interesting thing about this is that, you know, like a lot of filter types of things, you know, you're filtering out frequencies almost to the point where people can't hear it anymore, so it almost affects the volume in a certain way. And most filters nowadays come with attenuators or attenuverters here, so you can choose how much uh, this control voltage is coming in and moving this knob. So a little bit and a lot. And resonance will make it really obvious. And obviously we can do anything we want here, you know, with the shape of the loop. So it's, it's kind of a cool thing. Um, most filters, too, have sort of a choice. Um, this one actually doesn't, but I have two CV inputs. So what that means is, you know, I can say, okay, I'm going to take a low pass to CV1 and an envelope to CV2 and make them work together. <laughs> So you can hear we're getting a lot of complex movement um, just from something pretty simple here. You know, it's just two control voltages, one LFO, one envelope, sort of like moving things along. And I'm just using, you know, the LFO to trigger this envelope for right now. Um, but as we build our rack here, we can get more independent stuff happening. Um, just for comparison, we'll use this more Roland-y sounding filter. Uh, so here's... A rolling type of and here's our LFO going into CV1. This one is interesting because it has an attenuverter, so I can turn this signal upside down. Here with the resonance higher on this one, it really starts to sound Rolandy. And you can hear at these, you know, more extreme settings where, like, the filter's really low and the CV's really high, um, you almost are getting, like, amplitude changes because we're losing so many frequencies. Okay, so I hope that gives you some ideas. Next lesson, we're going to talk about these two a little more specialized type of filters.